reading something someplace, and it seems like there's some uh, young brothers and uh, or young people in uh, East Africa that's uh, calling for a youth get together as far as politically from uh, West African youth and Southern African youth, of course, with uh, with uh, East African youth because of stuff that's happening, you know. And uh, I particularly, I say particularly, I, I talked about this to my folks in Dimbaza, my young people in Dimbaza, and uh, they wanted to get together with all the SADC, you know, the Southern African nations. Anyway, if this is going to happen, it'd be kind of interesting. But the reason why they want to get together, because they're fed up. They're fed up with them older folks, you know, the the, the, the leaders. I forget what they call them. In, in, uh, in the United States, we call them the misleadership class, you know. In, uh, in Southern Africa, I forgot what they're going to do, it's miss something, you know, miss rulers or something like that. Anyway, so they're fed up. But it got me to thinking, you know. So let's see what happens with that. Because, you know, you got you know, most, of the, most of the Southern African, and most of the African population, they say, as according to you know, data and all the rest of that stuff, is that 70% of the African population is under 35 years old. Now, these uh, older folks are so used to, I don't know, call it the Stockholm Syndrome, whatever. They're so used to doing what the former colonial masters have done, or, or they all going to school in Europe when they come back, that they've been Europeanized. They guess, guess they're hanging around with a bunch of Europeans, and they figure they're like, they're like at Harvard, and they can, you know, they, they, they're in Europe, you'll be educated in the UK, or wherever they've been educated in. Unlike before, in the liberation struggle, they've been educated in the, you know, the, the Soviet Union. Well, anyway. And I guess they feel like, whoa, we might as well, you know, making friends with these guys. Let me do what these guys are telling me to do because I'm friends with you. So they come back, and because they got a good name or they have a name that from 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 their family name or whatever they got, and they're, they're living in gated communities, and they figure they can do whatever they want to do. Okay. So anyway, so let's see what that happens. But I've been talking about what well, the big thing in Africa that people have been talking about is how the Chinese are you know, making these business deals, and they, they're making these deals, and people don't know what's in, in them, but they realize that they're going to be losing their resources, their, their infrastructure. As, as Chinese build the infrastructure, they're going to lose the infrastructure. Well, what are they, it, it, this is funny. In Kenya, well, maybe it's not funny. In Kenya, they built, they're supposed to build this high-speed, you know, uh, state-of-the-art rail station, railroad, whatever. It and it seems like they built it, but they sent them down, you know, cars, you know, railroad, railroad cars, whatever, passenger cars, from, from cast-off ones that they had in China. You know, I have a, I have a next one neighbor over here that goes to Lovedale College, you know, I call him China because he says, China will save us, China, 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 China. And I got to thinking, because, you know, it's a dialogue, you know, and, you know I wanted to say the, the, the brother's wrong, the young, young man's wrong, but I got to thinking. Since they don't really have any strings attached, and all they want to do is take the resource or whatever happened, just think what happened now. You take something like, like a zombie when, they, when the Chinese are now going to own the, the electrical grid, grid right? Well, obviously before then, somebody was getting some kickback to keep that electrical grid going. You know, some, some of the big wigs, like, like every place, you know, they're getting a little kickback or whatever, they get some corruption or whatever it is. But when the Chinese take over, of course that corruption is going to stop. And the Chinese, might say, 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 the, say the Chinese say the corruption was, I don't know, I'm just going to make up another 30%. Well, the Chinese might take only 10%. They get some, you know, uh, of the corruption, you see? So what happens in a sort of weird, perverse sort of way, maybe China is going to save, <laughs> maybe the brother, your brother's right, maybe China is going to save Africa by replacing the, the remember, the, the, this, this, this leadership class has taken over from, from the, colon, the colonizers, well, the colonizers haven't really left, we're going to get into all that stuff, but, and now the Chinese are going to take over from, from these misleaders who took over from the colonizers, but uh, you understand, it's, it's, it's a mess. Um, I shouldn't make light of it, but that's the state of affairs in Africa. Anyway, this is uh, my only tiny little opinion for me, T from the past, is taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect. <laughs>